Along 18 years, 18 editions of the tournament, the organizer, Brian Callahan realized that the women's performance was significantly better than their uh, international rating. That means when the stronger women of the world were playing a very strong male opposition, they felt more motivated and the results were better than usual. Therefore, uh, Brian uh, decided to organize a specific edition um, with a clear opposition between men and women as a um, main matter of that edition. Among the top 100 in the world, we only have one woman. And regarding the number of players, we have just one woman for every 10, 12 or 14 men playing chess. In a game or sport where physical strength is not important at all, I mean endurance is important, but brute force is not important at all, this is a very big mystery. Unfortunately, today, in the 21st century, in the majority of the countries in the world, chess has a label of masculinity, giving a puppet as a present to a boy is almost as strange as giving a chess set as a present to a girl. The scientific studies about the differences between males and females' brain are in contradiction. We know, of course, that brains are different because the hormones are different. But how different, how much different? That we don't know yet. It could happen that women are genetically stronger than men for certain activities and vice versa and chess could be one of those activities, but we have to wait, we still don't know about it. Before poverty, the differences between boys and girls in chess is not big, but when the hormones come, then a big number of girls are quitting chess immediately, between 11 and 13 years old, while most of the boys keep playing chess. Well, precisely at that moment, the male's brain is uh, starting to be full of testosterone. And testosterone makes you more competitive. Among boys, adolescents, boys, it is very common that their target is to be the best in some field. While among girls, this is not that important, generally speaking. They are much more interested on making some uh, social networks, knowing new people, and things like that. Of course, it is true that uh, some uh, girls, when they are older and they arrive to the university, then they become very competitive. But it is too late in terms of chess uh, in a high competition because what you are not able to progress between 12 and 18 years old, it is impossible to recover later on. But the hormones theory is in question when we see the Polgar case. We have three sisters, Susan, Sophia, and Judith in Hungary, who are the object of um, a pedagogical experiment. Both parents, this is important to remember, are professionals in education and pedagogy. And before getting married, they were already thinking about the experiment they were planning to do. They were very lucky, they, have, they, they had three uh, girls, no boys, and the experiment was none of the three girls went to the school except for exams. They were educated at home, 
Chess was one of the most important subjects, together with uh, mathematics, uh, uh, literature, history, geography, etc., etc. And, well, they took some additional measures to somehow balance the situation and avoid the girls having psychological problems. In the afternoons, uh, many people from Budapest, both older people and uh, children, were invited to come to the house, to the Polgar's house, home, uh, to play with the girls and socialize and so on. And very important, in my, op my opinion, they started to travel very early all over the world. Uh, in my opinion, traveling is the best school of life. So probably that was a very good way of counterbalancing uh, the lack of uh, social life. But actually, the results were very good in both fields, human, I mean, educational and chess. Uh, from the human point of view, the three, those three girls are today three mothers uh, and very cultivated very elegant, multilingual. Everything is positive from the outside point of view regarding the Polgar sisters. From the chess point of view, well, Susan, the older one, was female world champion. Sophie, the middle one, uh, quit chess when she was 19, but until that point, uh, she had fantastic uh, results. Uh, playing against men. And the younger, Judith, is the strongest female player in the history of chess. She is the only woman uh, in the top 10. She was the eighth of, uh, in the world at uh, her best. And she retired in 2014. And since then, she's working very hard about chess as an educational tool. And this is, of course, a very significant case when we are talking about chess and women. One very prominent psychiatrist from the USA, Luan Brissandin, wrote two books, The Male's Brain and The Female's Brain. In one of them, she talks about one very good friend of her, uh, who was a mother of one boy and one girl. And she was obsessed with educating both of them uh, in an equal way, with no differences. Then one day, she went to her, uh, her girl's um, uh, room and she discovered that uh, the girl was cradling a truck. Therefore, if the baby educated in such a way, was cradling a track, what does mean? Is that genetic? Maybe, but that girl was also under the influence uh, from other elements like uh, TB or other people, relatives visiting the, the home, uh, the family, and things like that. We don't know. Instead of just uh, wait until the science gets more clear about this debate or this problem, we can do several things. The first one I recommend to do is starting tomorrow morning is to include chess as an educational tool in preschool. I mean, from three to six years old, boys and girls. Um, we have enough evidence and a very high level of satisfaction between school teachers specialized uh, at that, that age. Chess is very good uh, in a giant floor chess board mixed with music and dancing. You can work very important pedagogical targets uh, like uh, psychomotricity, laterality, memory, concentration, respect for the rules, respect for the opponent, horizontal, vertical, diagonal, first impulse control, etc. If you do so with boys and girls together, for those girls, 
just becomes something completely normal on, on daily basis. So you are deleting completely this label of masculinity I mentioned before. Then what else can we do? Precisely what Brian Callahan and the Gibraltar organizers are doing this year, 2022, here at the Garrison Library. We have a team of 10 uh, women, a team of 10 men. They are playing each other every day for 10 days. That means 100 games altogether. As the average of the of the ratings is more or less similar, more or less similar, it's a bit higher in the case of men, but just a bit, then I think it would be very significant uh, to see what the result is. And if the result is a victory of the ladies, then we should seriously think about the possibility of deleting the female tournaments. I mean, now a female player can choose. She can play a tournament only with women or an open tournament with men and women together. If this tournament and more editions like this one in the following years demonstrate that women are performing significantly better when they play against men, then probably one of the best things to do is to delete, to eliminate the female tournament.